Good morning, friends. Good morning. Still getting situated here. How are you guys this morning? Um, hope you're having a great day. Happy Mother's Day. Hope you have your coffee. Fresh, hot cup. Perfect. <laughs> Bella says good morning and happy Mother's Day. So now you all feel included. Oh, that is good coffee. I'm going to have to have a little bit more of that as we go along. Um, it is a great day. It is beautiful. The sun is shining. We have a temperature of 45 this morning, which is a squishy bit chilly. I thought about doing it out on the porch, and I thought, I might need a quilt if I go out there. So, in the kitchen we are, so that's good anyway. It's closer to the coffee pot. We are in our fifth session for this unit. And so, the whole unit is about the authentic church. And so, our first unit we looked at um, Built on Christ. And then we looked at that the authentic church should be sharing Christ. And we looked at the authentic church should be growing in Christ. And last week we looked at the authentic church should be worshiping God. And today we're looking at the authentic church should be serving in Christ. And it's a really good lesson. Um, the point of it, there's always a point. And so the point of our lesson today is we are to minister to one another and alongside one another. And that is just, that's really good. There's a little note here in our book, and I highlighted it and drew an arrow so I wouldn't forget to tell you. It says, every follower of Jesus receives a spiritual gift that God intends we would use to love and serve others, specifically those within our church family. Each gift is unique and the church body functions best when all its members are connected and doing their part. And so I thought that was really good. I try to make a, a note um, to tell like our young people and our uh, youth group, our Sunday school class, God has a specific plan that only you can do. Of the whatever there is, eight, 8 billion plus people on the planet, God has a a, a plan that is specific to you. That you're literally the only one in the 8 billion people that can do that job. I mean, think about that. How amazing is that? That the God who created the universe took the time, the thought, and the effort to make a plan specific just to you. I mean, that's, that's amazing. Anyway, so today... We are in Ephesians, and we're in chapter 4. So it's Ephesians chapter 4, and we're starting at verse 1, and then we kind of skip a little bit around there. Um, it is a really good, I really like Ephesians. And this one uh, chapter in Ephesians, in my Bible, is called Unity in the Body of Christ. And so we, we are the church, and there should always be unity in the church. But just like in a marriage, you know, how it's two completely separate individuals coming together to be one, that's our church. Except for it's like, you know, a hundred, you know, however many people coming together to be one body. And so there's there's going to be differences of opinion and there's going to be, um, you know, hard conversations sometimes. Because we're all individuals and we're coming together with one purpose and one thought and one goal in mind. And so Ephesians, this, this letter in Ephesians, this is going, this is trying to help us to become better at that. And, um, just a little backstory. This is written by Paul, who of course used to be Saul. Um, and he's writing it back to the church of Ephesus. And he's telling them, you know, I want you to, I want you to be aware. You, you really need to be watching for these things. These are important. And, you know, you need, there's an, it says, and he was actually in prison when he was doing this. So he, he was in prison due to his preaching, but Paul was still really concerned with this church and the believers there. And he really wanted to guard them against false teachers that might be misleading the church. And, and so he wrote to the church leaders to try to help them understand more clearly, this is what you should be looking for. This is These are the ways that you should be going forward. Okay, so we're going to read over this, then we're going to pray, and we're going to jump right in. So here we go. 
Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1. Therefore, I, the prisoner in the Lord, urge you to walk worthy of the calling you have received, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing one another in love, making every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope at your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. Now grace was given to each of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. And now we jump to verse 11. So Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry to build up the body of Christ until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of God's Son, growing into maturity with a stature measured by Christ's faithfulness. Then we will no longer be little children tossed by the waves and blown around by every wind of teaching, by human cunning with cleverness in technique of deceit, but speaking the truth in love. Let us grow in every way into him who is the head, Christ. From him, the whole body, fitted and knit together by supporting ligaments, promotes the growth of the body for the building itself in love by the proper working of each individual part. Okay, so that's our word today. So we're going to pray over that and we're going to dive right into it. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning, Lord, and we come to you seeking and asking and searching, Lord. We are asking, what is my goal? What what's the what's the plan you have for me? What do you want me to be when I grow up? And we just we ask you to fill this message, Lord. Block anything that may be of Satan, block anything that may be of me, but let your word and your message for each individual person who hears this, let it come to them, Lord, and let their hearts receive it. Let their hearts receive it and let their minds allow them to walk worthy of your love. We ask all of this in your precious name. Amen. And it just occurred to me that this message is such a great message to have this weekend. Um, Friday night, we attended a graduation here in Eminence. Fantastic job. Fantastic job. It was so wonderful. Um, for those of you whose schools may not allow baccalaureate at your school, I am really sorry. I am really sorry. And you should find a, a graduation to go to that allows a baccalaureate. Because it is a blessing. It is a blessing. We we got to witness firsthand young people bring a message of God to a gym filled with people. They walked boldly. They proclaimed their faith boldly through prayer, through song, through a message. They did a great job. Um, Kylie Mahan was actually the speaker. She's one of our youth. She's one of our kids that we've watched grow up at church. She did a fantastic job. I believe her mom has it on Facebook if you want to watch her message. Uh, Corey, I believe, has it on there. And it, she just did a great job. She really, really did. And then we went right into the graduation and it was wonderful to watch all the kids and to see all their accomplishments throughout their four years of high school and, and what they've done and, and what they're going to be doing. And they asked Renee and Greg Rowden to be their graduation commencement speakers. Fantastic job. Fantastic job. Uh, Greg, Greg was actually sick, so Miss Renee had to carry it all on her own. And she carried it effortlessly effortlessly. She did a great job and she brought a message to everyone. I mean, it flowed right in line with the graduation. I told her yesterday, we happened to be at her house for a graduation event. And I told her, I said, I can just tell you, if people were at that graduation on Friday, they got church. They got church. They got the word brought to them. It was fantastic. Then yesterday, we attended another graduation for another one of our youth. Jacob Bill graduated yesterday, and we attended his graduation. It was amazing. It was just a wonderful event. It was very God-centered, very Christ-centered. It was held in a church. 
it was just such a blessing, such a blessing. Um, Joel Bates brought their commencement speech and did a fantastic job. I mean, just, it was so good. It was so good. And so it has just been a blessing to watch these young people who we've watched their whole lives. I believe Jacob Bill was three weeks old, I think, the first time he attended the Baptist church. And Kylie was probably a week or two old, maybe, when she first came into the church. And so it's just been a blessing to watch these children grow up in the church and see how God has worked in their lives. And that, and then going right into this message about how God has a plan for each and every one of us. He has given you a gift, a gift that only you can do. It's just so great how it all runs together. And so if we start at the very beginning of our word, it says, therefore, again, you always got to look to see what the there is there for. And, you know, again, Paul is telling the church, you know, be careful, you know, guard yourself against those who are coming at you that may or may not know the true word. They may or may not know what you, you know, what the Bible really says. So be careful. And so he says, therefore, I, the prisoner in the Lord. Okay, so he's in prison. He's literally, literally in prison. But he's, he's not saying, I'm a prisoner because I preached for God. I'm a prisoner because I brought the word. He's saying, I'm a prisoner for the Lord. For the Lord, I'm a prisoner. I urge you to walk worthy. Oh, I love that. Walk worthy. And so if you are worthy, you are having a sufficient merit or importance. You are honorable if you are worthy. And if you are walking, walking is a verb. And so you might be, you know, on a march or a hike, or maybe you're just wandering through life. There's nothing wrong with wandering. But you are going worthy of the calling. And a calling is a strong inner impulse towards a particular course of action. You are, you have a calling on your life. You, you have a calling on your life that only you can do. There's no one else on this planet that God has equipped with that calling except you. You. And so it goes on and it says, walk worthy of the calling that you have received with all humility and gentleness and patience, bearing one another in love, making every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope at your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God. And Father of all. Okay, so all of that. You know, Paul is urging the readers to lead a life worthy of their calling. You know, in the Greek, the word for worthy was also used in reference to balance. as Like with a scale. You know, balance. So believers' behavior, it has to balance with their profession of Christ followers. So we have to live our life so that if somebody looked at our life, we look worthy. We look like we are walking to what we want to be or what we say we are. And it goes on and it says, um, you know, humility. In an ancient Greek Roman culture, um, if someone was to call a person humble, that was like an insult. I mean, you're, you're just so humble. You know, it was an insult because... They only valued like strong and powerful and forceful. That was what they valued. And so if you were humble, you were just, well, nothing. And so another uh, characteristic, characteristic is gentleness. And just like humility, gentleness was not valued at all. I mean, at all. And so they wanted Power, and you can't be powerful and gentle in their mind. You know, that's a contradiction of terms. So to treat someone gently, you know, it was just not seen as a good thing. However, Jesus was humble in everything he did. He treated people gently everywhere he went. And, you know, that was what he did. 
patience, this refers to specifically refraining from taking revenge. That's what this patience in this passage means. It means that, you know, someone did something to me, someone hurt my feelings, but I am going to be patient and I am going to let God handle it. And I am not going to seek a revenge or a, um, a status quo for that situation. Would you please check and make sure that I'm on and good on Facebook? Because I don't know that I am. I mean, I think I am, but I really don't know that I am. Um, bearing in one another with love. You know, nobody is perfect. Absolutely nobody on this planet is perfect. There was one perfect person. He walked, you know, 2,000 plus years ago. He was only here. Oh, thank you. He was only here for 33 years. You and I, we're not perfect. And that's just exactly what I was saying a while ago about the church. We're a body of believers that come together to form one church. But we're not perfect. And nobody in that building is perfect. And when we come together as a group, sometimes there's going to be a, you know, a conflict of interest. Sometimes we're not all going to agree on the exact same thing. Sometimes our feelings are going to be hurt. But we have to bear one another with love. That's what it says. Bear one another with love. And so if I am bearing somebody with love, then I can't walk around getting my feelings hurt every time they say something to me. I can't be looking to be offended every time they open their mouth. That's not bearing one another with love. Our book says, even within the church, people will disappoint and offend one another. Forbearing means that we are slow to become angry, refusing to allow a dis division to fester within the church. Loving our brothers and sisters is an active choice. We are making the decision on the daily. Just like you get up every day and maybe you look over at that spouse like poor Ed looks at me some mornings and he's like, at the end of this day, I'm still going to be married to her. I may not be that in love with her right at this particular moment, but at the end of the day, I am still going to be married to that girl. I may want to throttle her by the neck, but I'm still going to be married to that girl. It's the same in the church. We're a bunch of people with a whole bunch of different backgrounds, with a whole bunch of different points of views, and we're all coming together to be one thing. And some days, at, you have to look at that group saying, at the end of this day, I'm still going to be a member of this church. I'm still going to love that person across the aisle from me. I'm still going to love that person sitting in front of me. They may not be, I may not be their biggest cheerleader right now, but I'm going to love them and I'm going to be a, a unity with them. I'm going to do life with them. I am going to be a part of this. And it can be even different churches. I mean, last week we had the um, community service where our whole community comes together and holds church. It is a fantastic opportunity. If you've never had a, ch a chance to go to a community service, I'll let you know when the next one comes because you need to be there. But you know, all different walks and denominations come together to be one church because that's what we are. We are all one body. We just may attend different buildings, but we're one body, one body of believers in Christ. So I just love that. And that's where the next part of our lesson comes from. Paul challenged the church to work hard at maintaining unity. We are one in Christ. But the unity of the church, particularly the way it's expressed to the world, can be damaged by sin and selfishness. Um, pursuing, pursuing unity within the church is important. Is it, It's an important responsibility for every single Christian. It's not just the pastor's job to promote unity. It's not the deacon's job to promote unity. It's not the Sunday school teacher's jobs to promote unity. It's the entire church's job to promote unity. And with that being said... It's the entire body of believers' jobs to promote unity. Each church coming together to promote belonging to Christ. That's what we're called to do. It goes down at the bottom and it says, One body. We are a visible community. One spirit. The Holy Spirit indwells in all believers. One hope. It's in Christ alone. We hope for eternity. One Lord, we worship Jesus only. One faith, we all trust in Jesus for salvation. One baptism, through water baptism, we declare our faith. And one God, we are all, we all call on God as our Father. One. There may be 
a thousand of us at any gathering. I mean, maybe not in a minute, but there's probably 400, you know, but we are one body of believers. And that's, I just love that. I love that. It goes on at the bottom and it still, it says, still unity is not uniformity. We are all unique individuals with our own personalities, passions, and gifts. And by coming together in unity, God's purposes are accomplished through us. We don't all have to think exactly the same. We don't all have to even look exactly the same. But all of us have the same goal in mind. And that's to bring others to the family. That's to have a kingdom mind, a kingdom seeking mind. So if all of, if we're doing all of that, then we of course can work together. Okay. So the next part of our lesson is Ephesians 4 and we're at 11 through 13. And it says, and he himself, Jesus, and he himself gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to evangelize, some to be prophet, pastors and teachers. To equip the saints for the working of the ministry. To build up the body of Christ. Until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of God's Son. Growing into maturity with a stature measured by Christ's fullness. Okay, so if we're equipping, if we're, if we're being equipped, then we are being prepared to furnish a service or an action. That's what being equipped is. Equipped to be, is to be prepared to do something. And so you and I, we have been equipped. And so we have been prepared to do something. Now, a ministry, because we're equipped, the saints, the saints, which are the person declared righteous in God. So we've been equipped and we are to equip the saints who are the righteous declared by God for a ministry. And a ministry is the exercise of one's gifts or resources. That's what a ministry is. That's what it is. So whatever your gift is. Whether your gift is speaking. Or your gift is singing. Or your gift is carpentry. Or your gift is flower planting. Or your gift is showing love to one another. Or your gift is patience with small children. Or your gift is. You know. Playing sports with kids. Whatever your gift is, there it could be literally anything you can imagine. Anything that God blessed you with is a gift. Anything. Cooking. Whatever it is. Whatever it is that God blessed you with, that's your gift. That's your ministry. That's it right there. So are you using it? Are you using it for others? Are you using it to show others God's love? Are you stepping out in faith saying, I can do this. With God, I can do this. I got this. So are you are you using your gift? Are you using those resources that God gave you to the fullest of your ability? And asking him to fill in when you don't have what's left? When you can't do the calling that he placed on your life? Are you giving it to him and saying, I think you picked the wrong person. I'm not qualified for this. Me, right here. Okay, maybe you're not. But with him, you are. With God, you are exactly the person he called to do it. You are exactly the person he had in mind. You are it. Okay. Um, okay, there's a little book down, or a little note down here. It says, God provided the church with these leaders it's not so they can carry out the entire ministry of the church. Rather, it's to train the church members for ministry. So, you know, it's not the pastor's job to carry the entire ministry for the church. It's not the deacon's job. It's not the trustee's job. It's not the Sunday school teacher's job. It's the entire church's job to carry out the ministry. It's only those people's jobs to equip the, the rest of the church to carry out the ministry. That's that's all they're there for. You know, they're there as prayer warriors. They're there as teachers. They're there for guidance. But they're not there to do the whole job. They're there, the, the teachers, the pastors, the deacons, the trustees, all of those. They're, they are in their position to equip the rest of us to walk out and do the ministry. That's what that's what their calling is. Okay. It goes on in our next part and it says, 
Then we will no longer be little children, tossed by the waves and blown around by every wind of teaching, by human cunning with cleverness and techniques of of deceit. So once we've received the training, once we've read the message, once we are in the word of God, once we've been praying about it, once we've been asking God to lead us, we're not little children anymore. We're not easily just, you know, taken off by someone who's not telling us the truth. We're hearing that word. We're taking that word. We're applying it to God's word. If they match up, fantastic. If they're on two different paths, we need to get away from it because it is not the word of God. If it doesn't, if whatever you're hearing, whether it's from me or anybody, if what you're hearing does not match up with the word of God, that is a false teacher. I pray that it's never me. I take very, very strongly that command. And if I ever do get off context, point it out to me. I mean, with love, please. But point it out to me. And it goes on and it says, By speaking the truth in love, let us grow in every way into him who is the head, Christ. So we have to take these things that we're hearing, the word that we're hearing, we have to pull it into our hearts, we have to look at it from the Bible, from God's point of view, Is it matching up? Is what we think we're being called to do? Does it match up with God's word? Does it match up with what he would put in our lives for us to do? If so, then that's the calling. That's what he's calling us to do. And we are to walk worthy of that and go and do what he's calling us to do. Realizing that we are not strong enough, smart enough, brave enough, whatever enough to do it on our own. But with Christ. We are capable. We have the resources. We have them. You know, I am not a Bible scholar at all. I am not qualified to do this. But with God, I do it every week. And I try to never leave him out of it. To make sure that he's the one guiding me through it. That he's the one putting the thoughts in my head. That he's the one bringing it to me this morning. Hey, this is a great lesson on graduation weekend. Because we're called to walk worthy. Those kids are walking out into the world. And I pray that they are walking worthy. That they see the calling on their life. And they walk in way of it. And that we, as their support team, that we support them. And chances are... Maybe they're going to tell us, hey, you know, I feel like God's calling me to do this. And we're going to be like, whoa, are you sure about that? Are you sure? Because I don't know. I don't know. If they are feeling that's God's calling on their life, then that's probably God's calling on their life. And we need to find a way to support that. We need to find a way to lift that up and be the support group that they need. Whether it be through prayer, encouragement, you know, whatever it is that they're needing, We as the church, we as the body of believers, we have to support that new group that's walking out into the world to be the next leaders of our church. Okay, so the next thing it says is, um, From him, the whole body, fitted and knit together by every supporting ligament, promotes the growth of the body for the building of its Building itself in love by proper working of each individual part. So, the body of believers, that's you and I. So, like, one of us is going to be the, the the left arm or the right arm. One of us is going to be the right arm. And one of us is going to be the left arm. And the other one of us is going to be the the right ear. And maybe the other person of us is going to be the left eye. You know, and each one of those things is going to do a different thing. Maybe the right arm is the group that does the cooking. And maybe the left arm is the group that does all the the crafting and the building and the the repairs that need to be done. And maybe the right ear, that's the group that is hearing those prayers. Maybe even the unsaid ones. But they're hearing those prayers and they're working on those. And that left eye, that's the group that is seeing what maybe somebody else is overlooking. They're seeing that need. They're seeing that that despair on that person's face when they came in this morning and they're relating to them and they're approaching them with love and they are seeking that person out to be counseled to be a prayer warrior for them 
That's what that means. You and I, we are the different parts. We're not all going to do the same thing. We're not even all going to do the same thing the same way. And that's okay. There's no checklist at the church that says this is the only way this can be done. This is the only way this can be done. We can never variate from this. And if there is, we need to approach that. Because that is, to me, that's legalism. And that is, um, like, religion. But it is not God. God. God is for everyone. There is no one that's exempt from God's love. And you and I, our job is to show God's love to everyone that we come in contact with. That's one of our daily prayers is that every person we walk in contact with, we show them God's love. And so to me, that's what this message is today, today, that we walk worthy of our calling and we do our calling and we do it with love and we do it as a body of believers. So that's what it means to me. Maybe it means something else to you and that's perfectly fine. And if you want to talk about it, that'd be great. Um, church starts at 1045. Sunday school starts at 945. We have classes for everyone. We would love for you to attend. It, you would get such a blessing out of it. And I pray that if something in the past has happened and someone hurt you, maybe at the church or, you know, at somebody affiliated with a church hurt you, understand. I mean, it, you know, I think it said in our beginning, you know, everybody in that church is human and everybody in that church is a sinner. That's why we're there. I mean, I go to church fairly often and this is still as good as I am. And if you've been on the other end of my not happy day when I am not in my best mood, you know that I can be not very nice. Amen. That's Ed is over in the amen section here in the kitchen, by the way. That's what I'm saying, though. Every person in the church is a sinner. So, you know, you can't, or we shouldn't, put them up on some kind of pedestal and expect them to never hurt our feelings, to never say something that's going to make us angry, to never do something that we're like, well, that's not very Christian. Well, no, because they're a sinner. That's why we're there. So come and join us and don't feel like, you know, I need to work on myself before I get there. I got to do some stuff. I got to clean some stuff up. You know, no, you don't. No, that's, that's, that's God. He's going to take care of all that. You just get yourself in the place to receive it. So, anyway, that's my message. And that's what God brought this week. And I hope you got a message out of it. And I will see you at church. And we're going to close in prayer. Heavenly Father, I pray a blessing over everyone who is listening to this today or in the future, Lord. I pray a blessing over all of the moms, all of the stand-in moms, all of the dads who are having to be moms, all of the aunts that are stepping in to help raise, all of the close family friends that are stepping in to help raise, all the grandmas who are standing in the gap, everyone who is assuming that role of nurturing that precious child, Lord. I, I pray a special blessing over them, over the children who are having to stand in the gap and be the, the parent for the parent. I pray a blessing over them, Lord. I ask that you walk with them and let them know that they are loved, they are worthy, they have a calling on their life, and they are living it out, Lord. And I just pray a blessing over them. I ask that you be with us as we go throughout our day, Lord, as we encounter people that we show your love, that we show your love and we walk worthy of the calling that you have placed on us. And I ask all of this in your precious name. Amen. Okay, guys, have a great day. Love you. See you at church.